Hey everybody, John Burra, and welcome to Burra Tech. In this episode, we're gonna be exploring whether or not watching videos faster is the best life hack ever. All right, if you're like me, you like watching videos 1.5 or two times faster than normal. Is this the best life hack ever? In fact, I love doing this so much, whenever a video on a new site does not have this feature, I really don't like it. Now, I've been watching videos faster for more than 10 years now, and I absolutely love it. What is it about watching videos faster that is so appealing? In fact, I remember when the iPad YouTube app didn't have this feature, and when they added it, it was a very momentous day for me. I often do this with most of my content. If I'm watching news, or listening to a podcast, or reading an audiobook, it's usually 1.5 to 2 times faster. Now, the amount of speed differs on the actual person talking. Some people talk at a slower pace, and some people talk at a faster pace. For the people that talk at a slower pace, I often find that sometimes two times the speed isn't enough. A lot of people can't get used to the fast speed, but it takes a bit of time, and the first time you do it, it might be a little bit weird. I find that when you're listening to something faster, you tend to focus on it a bit more, and that focus is really what's necessary to engage in the content. By listening to it faster and focusing on the content, I find that I actually retain more. Furthermore, when I read audiobooks, I find that the two times speed is closer to what I would actually be reading. In fact, lately I've been listening to audiobooks before I go to bed. I'm often on screen all day as a coder, so just shutting my eyes and listening to a book at the end of the day is actually really awesome. In fact, we can talk about this in another video. So like I said, there's certain content that I actually love listening to that faster, but there's also a lot of content that I like watching at normal speed. So I find that TV shows and movies, specifically dramatic ones, don't really work when you watch them faster. I know that there's a lot of people that do that and comment below if you're one of these people, but I like to watch the movies and TV shows at the speed the director intended. The directors spend a lot of time with the pacing and actors spend a lot of time making sure that their lines are being delivered in the best way possible. So to speed that up, it's a little bit weird. You can go watch a movie at two times the speed and you'll see what I'm talking about. Personally, I find it ruins the experience. So what was the first instance where I actually watched something faster? So it's 2009 and I want to make a video game. In fact, I want to make an Xbox 360 game and I look everywhere and there isn't a single college or university in the world that has a course on how to do this. However, since it's 2009, there is a DVD set. So what I did is I purchased this DVD set and I ripped all the content and then through VLC player, I watched it at 1.5 to two times the speed. Now, when I discovered this, this was a huge Eureka moment for me. Let me explain. So I wanted to release a commercial game so that I can use it as my portfolio to get freelancing gigs and possibly get a job. Now, back then, it isn't like today, where if you are a really good coder, you'll definitely find yourself in a job. Back then, and specifically in 2009 because of the recession, it was really difficult to find a job, even as a coder. So why was this such a great moment for me? And I'm gonna tell you why it's so awesome. I'm not saying that going to class is a bad thing. In fact, if you wanna improve yourself, that is a really good thing. However, in this particular instance, I had a huge amount of productivity shoved into a small period of time. Now let's say, for instance, I decided to go to class if there was a class available and learn how to make XNA or Xbox 360 games. I could absolutely do this, however, there's a lot of inefficiencies. If you think about it, I have to commute my body to the class, and then let's say it takes 30 minutes to commute my body there and back. That's one hour a day. Now, if I go to school every day of the week, that's five hours of time. Think about how much you could learn in five hours. Now, if you were to watch five hours of content at two times the speed, that's really 10 hours of content. Now, this is where the productivity really shines. If you want to listen to one hour of content in 30 minutes, you can absolutely do it. It's better to do 30 minutes of focused learning versus doing something for an hour that's unfocused. On top of commuting myself, I would have to go to a class and listen to the instructor in real time. So like I said, if the lecture was an hour, I could really do that in 30 minutes. So if you've ever been to a lecture, oftentimes there are technical malfunctions. For example, the projector's not working or the microphone's not working if it's a really big lecture. There can be all these setbacks and that's wasting your time. So when you learn from home and you watch something faster, it's a lot more efficient than having any kind of technical difficulties. Of course, you could have your technical difficulties, but that's almost impossible to happen because how can you really screw up video? The web is built for video. On top of this, you have to wait for the next class. Now, if I wanted to go to school maybe five days a week and go to a two-hour lecture each day, 
I have to wait for that next lecture every day. When you learn from home and when you watch things faster, you can do everything at your own pace. Now, for some people, this is really good and some people, this is really bad. If you're the kind of person that needs to get things done yesterday, like myself, then it's really good. You can just watch the videos, do the exercises and continue on as fast as you can. In that period of time, I was working part time with odd jobs and I would literally spend all of my extra time learning how to code in XNA and making an Xbox 360 game. I spent pretty much all of my free time doing it. Now I couldn't do this if I went to class because if I wanted to learn on Friday night at let's say 10 o'clock in the evening, I would have to actually go somewhere to do that and it would have to be offered. But when you watch things from home at two times the speed, then you can do it whenever you want. On the flip side, this is really bad if you're not a self-starter, if you have to be prodded to go along. And over the years, I've realized that more people are like that than like myself who need to get things done yesterday. I always say to myself and to my employees and to any future entrepreneur, if you have an idea for something, you're already two weeks late. You have to get it done as quickly as possible. Now, at the time, I could do that. I could literally buy the videos, watch the videos, and get things done. It's funny how the world can change. At the time, building a specific portfolio wasn't as revered as it is today. So whenever anybody asks me for advice, I always say that you want to make your programming skills like a performance. For example, if you're at a basketball game and there's a few players there that are absolutely crushing it, you want to have that mentality like those basketball players. When you code, it has to be like a performance, like you're playing a game. And what I mean by that is that when you perform, you have your portfolio and you release practical projects so that when you get a job, you can simply go to your desk and get work done like a performance. Like basketball, there are times when you train and then when you play. When you're a coder, there are times when you train and learn more tools for your tool set and then you perform building your code. Now this is in stark contrast to the way things used to be. The way you, things used to be is that you'd have to go get a computer science or computer engineering degree and then you would somehow find a job through there. But over the years, a lot of tech companies will hire based on performance rather than your actual credentials. So this is a story for another time. Click here for that story on whether or not your portfolio is more important than your CS degree. So what happened to that project? Well, I released the game and the sales were pretty lackluster. In fact, it wasn't really that good of sales. However, I did book a lot of freelancing gigs after that and it paved the way to where I am today. So by releasing a product today, you are getting to the starting line while everybody else is trying to get to the stadium. Releasing a product today shows that you can actually get things done on your spare time. Think about it, you can use your spare time for literally anything. And if you use it to build projects and improve your career, this is arguably the best way you can use your spare time. You can play video games, you can be doing a bunch of other things, and those things are fun to do, but if you're building your project in your spare time, you're gonna be unstoppable. In fact, if you continue to work on your career and work on your skill set, in two years, you'll completely leave the competition behind. Side note, it is possible to be overworked, but that's a story for another time. Back to the project. I did make a bunch of money freelancing and I made money because of the game, not necessarily from it. The next year I produced a bunch of iOS apps and iOS games using a software called Game Salad, which was way easier to make games than the Xbox 360 game. And a year after that, I started making coding tutorials and it's been up ever since. So going back to the title of the video, personally, I watch things faster than normal. And I do this because it's a great productivity hack. You can consume more content, in less time. It's as simple as that. All right, thanks for listening. If you watch videos or are watching this video at a faster pace, please comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Now a word from this video sponsor, NordVPN. If you want to keep your location private and your data encrypted, you should use NordVPN. If you use the link below and use the coupon code BURRA in the checkout, you can get 75% off the three-year plan. So why should you use NordVPN? Well, NordVPN will let you have up to six devices at once and it will let you change your country at random. So if you get one of those messages that's saying this video is not playable in your country, with a click of a button, you can simply move your country. Not only that, NordVPN has servers all around the world and they're lightning fast. In addition, you get to use their Android and iOS app for free if you want this service on your mobile device. So if you want 75% off a three-year plan and one month free, you can take a look at the link below. Just make sure you use the coupon code BURRA so that they know I sent you. With NordVPN, you can rest assured that your data is safe. Please, of course, like and subscribe. And if you want to fund this channel and Mammoth Interactive, you can check out our products below. Every bit of money goes into making more content. Thanks for listening, and I hope to see you in another video.